Good morning. I'm Father Morris at St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Essex Wells, New Jersey. And welcome to this joyous celebration of Easter. Even in the midst of our lockdown here in New Jersey, Easter comes, Christ is risen again. To prepare ourselves for worship, our organist, John Kravarnik, will play a prelude for a time of quiet meditation to open our hearts and minds to the risen Christ. our at-home viewers that a complete service leaflet can be found on the St. Peter's website. Just go to St. Peter's, Essex Fells, New Jersey, and you will find a complete uh, worship uh, leaflet that you can follow the service with. And now we stand and sing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, verses 1, 2, and 4. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. 
Let us rejoice together saying, Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that they died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son overcame death and opened to us the gate of life everlasting, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now, now proclaim his, his mercy endures, endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our hearts. On this day the Lord has acted. He will rejoice and be glad in it. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, 
where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is in your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, as she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in our sight, in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. There are two resurrections in this Easter morning story, and a third about to happen. Now, the first is obvious. Jesus' triumph over the dark forces of oppression, death, and human sinfulness. But there's Mary's resurrection. From her grief and sorrow, which blind her at first to seeing that it's really Jesus. And then there's the disciples' resurrection. They do not yet believe. They're lost in utter discouragement, disappointment, and despair. It's all over. The mission, the good news is all over. And Christ is about to appear to them that this evening in the upper room and to begin raising them from this death that they are in. Things come to an end, and it can be like a death. And resurrection comes in many forms, because it's not just the event of being raised from physical death. It's not just Jesus' resurrection 2,000 years ago. It's the power of Christ himself 
that can that shape itself to many different forms and varieties of death. After all, Jesus didn't just say, we heard him in the Palm Sunday gospel last week, he didn't just say that he would lead us to the resurrection, to the great resurrection of the dead at the end of time, but that he is resurrection and life, right here and now. In Greek, the word is very simple. Resurrection, anastasis, means standing up again. It's that simple. And it happens on the simplest physical, ordinary level up to the great resurrection that Easter Sunday proclaims, which is the overcoming of the deadening forces of sin and of physical death itself. Christ promises that he is a life-renewing spirit that can bubble up within us like a burbling spring again and again and again in ordinary resurrections that we may take for granted, however grateful we may be for them. Now, I trust what Jesus said about being resurrection and life, because I've experienced more than one resurrection in my own life. I've told this congregation that I suffered a very serious case of bipolar depression up and down for over a decade. And I literally, at some point, skirted the edge of death literally skirted the edge of death. But more than that, I fell into deadness. If you have ever been clinically depressed, you're deadened all over, physically, emotionally. And coming out of that deadness was a resurrection. It happened in stages for me, as resurrections often do. Resurrections from child abuse, resurrections from alcoholism, resurrection from all kinds of death-dealing things that make something over in our life. My healing came from a mix of therapy, antidepressant drugs, diet, exercise, a loving wife, supportive friends, in the end, some regular spiritual healing. It was a series back from this kind of death to a fuller life. Now, in advance of a wave of depression early on in that troubled decade, I would have a dream of an oncoming tidal wave, which I think symbolized, my therapist thought, the backed up feelings that were just waiting to overtake me. Because my depression was not simply biochemical as bipolar depression is, but also aided by circumstances in my early life. And so I sort of got to know that if I dreamed about the tidal wave, in three or four months, the depression would set in. And one of the signs of this gradual resurrection was that I had a very vivid dream once of the tidal wave coming. But I was with my sister climbing a mountain. We were climbing up this craggy rocks of a mountain. And we got to this place and the tidal wave came and it lapped at our feet like the children of Israel passing through the Red Sea and then the Red Sea closing in to defeat Pharaoh's armies and lapping at their feet as the last stragglers got in. In the dream, the tidal wave did not reach us. And that was the beginning of the real turning point in my life. So I believe in resurrection. I've been there. Jesus' resurrection was much more than this, of course. He's bursting the bonds of death. This is the ultimate resurrection. He reappears to his disciples with his presence intensified, glorified, expanded, and communicable. C.S. Lewis calls it a life-giving, soul-shaping, catchable energy and spirit. We're in the middle of a terrible catching death moment. But the life of Jesus Christ can be resurrection on all kinds of levels, if not the physical, then the emotional and the spiritual at any time, in any place, and in any life. The risen Christ, Paul tells us, is a life-giving spirit that can help us resist the forces that would pull us down, giving strength to move step by step higher toward becoming a greater force for good in our lives. Strength to overcome the death-dealing viruses of selfishness, hard-heartedness, greed, 
violence, and vision, which are the perpetual plagues of human life, the big spoilers of the good life for us personally and for us communally. And what we see going on in the middle of this pandemic are resurrections, not only people getting well, thank God, but the kind of sacrifice that's going on as people who have sort of worked themselves to the end of their rope, take a deep breath and go on, the caregivers, the volunteers, we're watching ordinary resurrections. Now, the ongoing story of Christ's resurrection through the centuries includes countless stories of such resurrections. The millions of addicts who have found that relying on a higher power lifts them out of it, like the London carpenter who said he didn't really know whether Jesus turned water into wine, but he knew that Jesus could turn beer into, car into, into carpentry. Like the embittered woman I knew who was headed for separation and divorce, who in a moment of prayer, suddenly much to her astonishment, saw her husband in a very different light and forgave him and their marriage went on. Like the band of Palestinians and Jews I met in Israel who had had enough of the violence that, that all had children killed by the other side. And one of the men wanted to go out and start killing Palestinians, one of the Jewish men, and he realized suddenly that if he did that, he was just participating in a violence that wouldn't end. And something happened in his heart. And he said, reconciliation is, is the only way. And he found Palestinian Arabs who had suffered the same kind of tragedy, the same kind of ending, and they were risen above, like me fleeing the tidal wave on the mountain, risen above their hatred and vengeance and became a force for good in that very troubled society. Like the spoiled kid, St. Francis of Assisi, who rose up from a frightening illness and catastrophic depression into a generous compassion and an active love for the poor and the outcasts that changed the medieval society of so many places in Italy. Like C.S. Lewis himself and other atheists whose rationalist denial of the existence of God as a force for good is surprised by joy some afternoon as C.S. Lewis was riding on a bus and something in him awakened to the holy and opened a whole new door of life for him. For the woman in a church that I knew, who was raised in a non-believing family, who always understood there was some special X factor, that's what she called it in life. She'd hardly ever been in a church but the sex vector was something in nature that she felt. It was something in the kindness of other people she felt. And she went into an Episcopal church one Sunday morning just in speculation. And she realized that all these people were actually talking to the X factor. And this opened a door in her mind out of that limitation into an expanded and productive life. Christ is alive and active in the world, both overtly and clearly as Jesus Christ, but also as incognito in countless ordinary resurrections where this life force is not given the credit. But it's there. It gives people the power to stand up again. That's Christ's power, whatever you call it. And today Christ invites us to embrace him ever more deeply, to accept him anew, as he has always done for all of us at every moment, even the darkest ones where we cannot see him. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through resurrection from the dead, God has given us new birth. Let us offer prayers to God for the living hope of all the world, responding to the phrase glory and praise to you with glory to you, O God. Glory and praise to you. Glory to you, O God. For peace from on high and for our salvation, glory and praise to you. Glory, glory to, to you, you, O God. God. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all creation, Glory and praise to you. Glory to you, God. For those celebrating a birthday, Pat Aliota, Ron Ellis, Helen Pulitano, Stanley Al, and John Pavernick, glory and praise to you. Glory to you, O oh God. For this holy gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, glory and praise to you. Glory to you, O oh God. For Michael, our primate, Carly, our bishop, the presbyters, the deacons, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, glory and praise to you. Glory, glory to you, O oh God. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, glory and praise to you. Glory, glory to you, O oh God. For all travelers, prisoners, the suffering, the oppressed, and all those in special need, help them, O God. Glory and praise to you. Glory to you, O God. For those suffering from any affliction, especially for the victims of the coronavirus, especially for John and Martha Blake, relatives of Chris and Jim Blake, and Chris's brother, Paul Schultz, for those infected at Crane's Mill, and for those who are all the departed, give them rest, O God. Glory and praise to you. Glory, Glory to you, O oh God. Remembering Blessed Mary, Mother of the Lord, Saint Mary Magdalene, first witness of the resurrection, Saint Peter, our patron, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Glory and praise to you. Glory to you, O oh God. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the opening of the word and the breaking of the bread. You who live with the Father and the Holy Spirit in the midst of your people and in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> At this Easter Sunday service, we celebrate the Eucharist. Of course, this is under very different circumstances. I alone will receive both the bread and the wine. The participants here who choose to will receive the bread, which has been very carefully prepared in a proper fashion. And those of you at home are invited to make a communion in your hearts. As Anglicans, we believe that in the sacrament, on the outer level, we participate in the consecrated bread and wine, which becomes a sign, symbol, and sacrament of the true presence of Christ. 
but that we feed on him in our hearts by faith. And so at home, all of you watching can have your moment of internal communion with Christ in which you invite him anew into your heart to be that resurrection power of which I spoke. And now we stand in silence as we exchange a silent peace <clears throat> and in the silence send peace to those we love, to those we have difficulty with, to those who are our friends, those who are our opponents, and to the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. O God, who has taught us that in quietness and confidence shall be our strength, let the peace of Christ reign in our hearts and be shed abroad through us as a blessing for all who cross our path. Amen. And now we go to the altar <clears throat> to offer ourselves. The lifting up of bread and wine here is a lifting up of our hearts and our minds to God. And then the, the prayer of consecration is as a consecration of us to join Christ's life as it moves in spiritual power through the world. And as we prepare the altar, Carl Sturkey will sing for us one of the great Easter hymns. Chiefly are we bound to praise you, the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn. Proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Holy Lord, who 
glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom, to the sorrowful joy, to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. And the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he said, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise we you, you, we bless you, you. you, we give thanks, thanks to you, you. and we, we praise, praise you, you, Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now it's Christ has taught us. Are bold to say. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has given over to death for us, that he might give us life, and we will share this bread. Share it as our last life. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gives himself for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
around some of them, see a lot of their constant presence in our minds and remember us. To nourish, heal, purify, and bring forth the brightness of God's image in us. Grant that though we may not receive the outward signs of bread and wine, we may be inwardly united with your constant offering of yourself to the life of the world, and truly fed inwardly upon the spiritual grace of your constant love. Amen. Amen. Let's all say together this prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, 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 you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. When you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood, send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love us and serve you with gladness and sickness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and everlasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to eternal, your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. After the final hymn, we'll once again sit in quiet meditation as John plays for us the postlude. But now we stand and sing our going forth hymn, He is risen, He is risen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.